Hello, everybody. It's Reed Tracy. Welcome back to the You Can Heal Your Life podcast. Today, our special guest is Kristen Butler, and she's um, started an amazing website, The Power of Positivity, which has had millions and millions and millions of visitors. She wrote um, a great journal that has been the Three Minute Positivity Journal, which is lots of people use all the time every day and it's keep spreading around the world and she's just written a brand new book called the comfort zone and how are you doing Kristen welcome I'm doing great Reed thanks for having me it's exciting to have you and uh, the book is amazing I've been reading through it for the last little bit here and um, I just wanted to start off asking you, like, um, kind of what inspired you to write the book? Like, what, why did you write a book called The Comfort Zone? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, Reed. Thank you. You know, I wrote The Comfort Zone after being someone who lived by the hustle advice and the step outside of your comfort zone advice. And at the time, I had big dreams and I wanted to be successful. But after rounds of burnout, of following that advice with high levels of stress and panic attacks, I hit rock bottom. And in that place, every area of my life was completely falling apart. And in that place, I said to myself that I can either give up or I could try something new. And in that moment, I decided to prioritize comfort. And I started asking myself, you know, what would feel good right now? How can you have fun today? And from that place, I started taking habits and making choices that felt good and were for my well being and not necessarily for my success. And, you know, to answer your question, eight years ago, I took the writer's workshop with you and Wayne. And um, in that moment, I realized I have to share this message with the world. I have to, you know, tell society that we need to redefine our relationship with our comfort zone, that it's actually not our enemy. Yeah, for sure. And it's amazing that you have those struggles because everyone sees like, oh, this big success, Kristen (laughs) Butler. And She's had, you know, like all, millions of people know you from your websites and Instagram and all that sort of thing. And it's always hard for people to understand that that it hasn't always, it, it wasn't all that easy to get there. And yeah. and and especially like you, you mentioned this in your book and things like that, that um, that most people want to be in their comfort zone, but, and uh, I mean, most people are advised step out of your comfort zone to succeed, you know, like we've all heard that so many times. And then your advice is that stay in the comfort zone to succeed. So can you explain a little bit about that? But I agree with you. Like I never thought of it like that before until I read that in your book, but I mean, it's so true that everyone does say to step out to succeed or you have to take these chances and all that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as a young child, I was very impressionable and I was a lifelong learner. I'm a lifelong learner. And so absolutely, I actually think it's dangerous advice. And I know that from experience. And, you know, I feel like the only way to succeed that nourishes our well-being is when we're inside our comfort zone and we prioritize our safety. You know, even science tells us that the stress center of our brain is triggered, our amygdala, when we feel like we're facing a threat, when we're under stress. So you go into this fight, flight, or freeze response when you're always pushing and always taking yourself to the limit and kind of living, letting stress guide your success. Um, You know, there's countless research on what stress does to our body. And then there's research on what creativity and ease and flow does for our productivity. And so I feel like high levels of stress might bring us short-term success, but at least from my experience and 
you know, observing others that, you know, eventually you're going to burn out. Eventually something's going to go. It's going to be your health. It could be your relationships. And so I'm asking people to get in their comfort zone, feel that safety, prioritize that joy, and then expand from that place instead of always trying to step out. Yeah. And can you describe a little bit like what you see as the quote comfort zone? Because you've kind of been talking about this a long time and I'm sure to new, to you, you know exactly what it is, but how do you <laughs> describe people like what is your comfort zone? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. You know, there's actually a misconception, you know, and in my book, I talk about the difference between being comfortable and being complacent. So I actually have two zones for that. So in the complacent zone, it's kind of the zone of inaction. We think we're happy, but in this place, we really don't want growth. And when you go deeper, that inaction is really a place where you're being held back by your fears and securities and doubts, and you're not setting healthy boundaries. The comfort zone that I'm talking about is the zone of inspired action where you feel safe, confident, at ease. You might be setting healthy boundaries and you're expressing yourself in ways that feel good and you're enjoying your life. So I look at it a little differently. Um, but when you make that mindset um, shift, it's so subtle, but it makes such a huge difference, as you know, with what our words can do in our life. Yeah, for sure. And, and you kind of have three zones of living that you talk about. Yeah. I think that ties in perfectly to explain this. Why don't you yeah, tell people yeah. about that? Yeah. So like I said, the comfort zone, it's like the zone of inspired action where you feel grateful. You're coming from a place of joy. You're prioritizing ease and flow. Um, you're thinking of things abundantly. You're taking time for self-care. You're prioritizing boundaries and um, and your inner and outer needs. The second zone is the complacent zone. And as I mentioned, that's really the zone of inaction. We think we're happy. We think we don't need to grow. We think that we don't need to take action. But really, we have all these layers that we've collected over the years of negative emotions and fear and doubt. And we feel like the world is a hard place, that things are difficult. And so we're actually really unmotivated in this place. And the third zone, which I haven't talked about yet, is the survival zone. And from my research, I found that's where most of us as a society are. You know, it's excess action. It's the hustle culture. And it brings burnout because we're constantly needing to force and control and push things for our favor and for our success, for the momentum, but it often leads to negative emotions like jealousy and, you know, you get on social media and you're comparing yourself or you have the fear of missing out. So you're just constantly taking more action, thinking it's going to get you ahead and it really isn't. Yeah, for sure. That makes so much sense. I mean, just to look at it all in that way. And I know like Louise Hay always used to say like, once she got kind of on this spiritual path, she couldn't stop anything from happening, um, good happening in her life. So she always used to, you know, she used to say like, she just, uh, her thought was like, how can I help other people succeed? How can I do this? And, and she couldn't stop succeeding herself. So like she, it's that exact example of, of the things around you don't affect you in that way. So I think that's that's very, very cool way to look at it. Um, yeah, one of the things work. that you you talked about what, in the book was like, as far as uh, I loved was create your comfort zone vision board. I'd love to hear yeah. you talk a little bit about that because you, so you're not saying like, just get in your comfort zone and stay there, but you can expand and grow and do different things. and. And throughout the book, you have so many practical things that people can do, like exercises and things to help them implement it. You're not just saying, oh, here's my great ideas, go try to do it. But you actually help them, which I think tons of people are going to love. But I'd love to have you explain the comfort zone vision board for people, because I think it's something everyone can use. Yeah, you know, when I first started vision boards, 
I was like, how does this make sense? I'm just kind of putting things that I want on this board. And, you know, for me, it didn't work as much because I was saying like, wow, I'm not there. And I feel like many people struggle with vision boards because they actually are comparing themselves to where they think they should be. And, you know, and that creates negative self-belief. So with my vision board, I actually want you to create a circle with three layers. And in that innermost circle, I want you to put the things that you have achieved. So when you need those reminders about, hey, look how far I've come, look what I've done. You don't forget about that. So that becomes part of your vision board. And as I say, expand your comfort zone. The next ring are the things that you know it would only take a few steps to get there. And they feel like they're not as much of a stretch. They're very doable or you see yourself doing it sooner. So you put that in the next ring. And then those far out, um, far fledged goals that you're like, wow, I'd love to have this in five or 10 years. Um, Or the things that you think, maybe I could never do that. Put your big goals on that outer ring so that you can see the steps clearly of how to get there instead of looking at it and saying, wow, that'd be so nice. And, but I I don't really know what I'm going to do to get there. It just feels like you're bridging all three of those, um, when you create a vision board in this way. So I have the entire exercise in the book and I am very detailed about how you can do it and ways to do it. But I've even heard, um, People, you know, some of the friends that have read the book ahead, you know, they they even take it a step further and create layers of things they have accomplished in their past because, you know, it's always haunting us like, let's do the next thing. Let's do the next thing. But I'm not there. Right. So looking back shortly of what you've done well and then looking ahead of where you can still go. And I create I call that your expanded self in the book. So you're expanding your comfort zone. You're expanding who you are and where you're going to go. Exactly. And what other exercise in there is one of your favorites in the book? Yeah, I really love the tool of acclimation. And what that is, is really how we naturally grow and we naturally expand. And before this, I never really um, read anything about what's really the actual measure of growth. So with acclimation, when you're trying something new, you're actually step one, it is unfamiliar and a little uncomfortable. It's kind of like stretching your body. When your muscles are tight, you know that stretching it a little might be kind of uncomfortable, but afterwards you're going to have relief. And so you stretch into that, but you're not going to stretch it to the length of pain, right? So when we try something new, it might be unfamiliar or uncomfortable, but this is a very short phase. And The next phase is actually we become more familiar with it and we're still a little uncomfortable, but with practice, it pushes us to the next phase, which is comfortable and familiar. So when we, that's kind of like when we're in our zone, we are, we have attracted whatever it was we wanted into our comfort zone and it's become who we are and we can access it and do it in the flow. So I feel like it it sets us up for the stages of growth and what that actually means so that when we're doing something, we don't judge ourselves. We're like, oh, yeah, you know, with a little more practice, I'm going to be become more comfortable or I'm going to become more familiar with it. And I use that when I'm trying to achieve or do anything and it works well. Yeah, I bet it does. It sounds like (laughs) it would. And so as you were like writing this book and thinking about it, like, who did you think the ideal reader was? Like, who were you really aiming for that when you were writing this? Because you were probably thinking of, you know, maybe it was yourself, maybe it was some clients, maybe it was different people. Like, who do you, who do you think can benefit the most from what you teach in the book? You know, um, our audience is men and women from all walks of life, all nationalities, all over the world, all different ages. And so I kind of wrote it for everyone. But as I was writing it, my team, they were like, I think women would really resonate with this most. They would, they probably intuitively feel the same thing. And when I would talk to other people, other women, they would say, yeah, I intuitively knew this, but I always was trying to take the advice that, you know, the outside world is saying. Um, Interestingly enough, though, is as I share the book, 
men also really resonate with the book. And I was very surprised with that because I didn't expect it actually. And I feel like maybe there's so much pressure to perform and step out of your comfort zone that I think it's going to bring relief to anyone who is tired of living so stressed and constantly pushing themselves or forcing an outcome and give them permission to prioritize what feels good, you know, prioritize their inner needs and set healthy boundaries with people and with their time. Yeah. So as someone gets taken out of their comfort zone, like obviously everyone's not in their comfort zone all the time, probably. I mean, maybe you've got to the point where you can stay in, but as we all are going along and we get out, how do we get back in? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a really good question. So I feel like when we're outside of our comfort zone, we can use our emotions to guide us. So even for me, if I'm, if a fear comes up or a limiting belief, you have to redirect that. So everyone is different in how stress affects their body. And so our emotions are really an amazing guide to bring us back to where we need to be. So, you know, whatever habits that you love that bring you peace, you know, for me, I'm walking out in nature, uh, calling a loved one, doing something fun. I love prioritizing fun when I feel like, whoa, maybe I did too much today. And just so really grounding ourselves and tuning into our emotions because they're most, the most amazing guide, really. And, and, and what's the biggest clue that we're in our comfort zone? Like, how do we know when we're in it? You know, like, it sounds good and I want to get there and here's some advice to get, get back, but how do I know I'm in that right place? Yeah, I feel like the comfort zone, you're in your comfort zone when you feel safe. So wherever that is. And if you don't feel safe, creating that safe space internally. So I talk about that in the book. And I I talk about having an inner home. And when you can create that internal safety, you can take that with, with you wherever you go. When you feel safe, you can express yourself, who you truly are, which is all of our goal, right? And then enjoy your life. So when you don't feel safe, you don't really want to express yourself. You may put up walls and then you're not really enjoying the day. You're not enjoying the process. I feel like We don't want to chase a goal all the time or go to the next vacation. We want to enjoy the life we have right now. So just feeling grateful, like these are, you know, common emotions that people talk about, but they really are indicators that you are in your comfort zone. You know, you wake up, you feel grateful for the day, you know, you move through the day and you feel joy or you feel peace or you feel ease. And when you don't feel these emotions, and I talk about this in the book, you have to have those inner conversations about how can I feel like this? If I want to feel like this, how can I get there? And everyone is different, but the emotions are the same. Yeah. And so what are some key ways to expand your comfort zone? So you get going, you're all set, but you want to get it a little, you know, keep going. Like we talked about the vision boards and all that. What are some other ways? You know, for me, when I expand my comfort zone and I, if something feels maybe too heavy or hard, I might ask for help. I might ask a close friend, a family men- member. Right now I have, as, as I'm launching this book, I have coaches and mentors. And I was just telling someone the other day, I have so many coaches and mentors and <laughs> friends like helping me right now just because they're just supporting um, this big launch. I'm expanding my comfort zone this during this entire process of creating this book. So I think number one, it's really important to ask for help. And a lot of us feel shame doing that, but there's nothing shameful about it. We're meant to ask for help. I also feel like prioritize your self-belief and the positive self-beliefs inside. We can easily expand our comfort zone by changing those limiting beliefs. And we might sometimes think we might not have any, but they come up and as they come up, just dealing with them instead of numbing them or, you know, putting them somewhere for later. Right. Um, and third, I would say, get comfortable with expansion, get comfortable with momentum. We're here to live. We're here to experience life. The comfort zone is not like saying stay home all the time. The comfort zone is saying, 
take it, t- create that inside and take it everywhere you go and enjoy your life. Enjoy the experience. Expand it. Get comfortable with more things. So, um, yeah, I think that answers your question. <laughs> Yep, that's perfect. And is there any one final or final things that you want to leave us with, like that we that we need to know before before you leave us? <laughs> no, I think through this process, just be gentle with yourself. You know, finding your comfort zone and then prioritizing it can feel overwhelming at times, but it's so important. And just be gentle with where you are and where you're going because life is not perfect. We live in a world of duality. I have challenges every day, but by by prioritizing these feelings of, of comfort and the comfort zone mindset, I can access joy and ease easier. And so I want that for other people. I want them to truly enjoy the journey and not just say they want to, and work so hard to get to that place to one day feel like that and then never feeling like that. That to me is just um, so sad. So I want that for people. I want them to be happy. That's wonderful. So anyone that wants it, here it is, the comfort zone. I hope you all go out and get it. I think it'll really help you moving along and getting comfortable with your life. And thank you very much, Kristen. Yeah, thank you so much, Rita. I appreciate you. 